He went to a room with a flowing river of lava. The flow comes from the mouth-shaped fixture in the wall, and across the river lies the door, unlocked and free to pass through. Despite any magic you have, the flow and the temperature of the lava is clearly too much. There must be a way across this trap. Hello terrain engineers. In today's video, we're going to add intelligence to terrain to make smart, immersive puzzles that are easily changed between games. These kits, now available at terraintronics.com, include everything you need other than paint, glue, and imagination to create puzzle rooms that rely on magnets to solve puzzles. Over at terraintronics.com, you'll find a description of the hardware, the electronics, and the documentation to be used to design your puzzle game. At the heart of this kit are reed switches that close when a magnet is in their presence. John over at Tabletop Witchcraft designed an early prototype of this kit in his video. He used reed switches under the floor and the magnets in the player's bases to be able to switch on LEDs. In this video, we'll talk about how to assemble the hardware and how to create puzzles. In the box, you'll find four walls, braces, a foam floor, and some wall frames. Walls are assembled like this and hot glue used. A right angle should be used to ensure it's all square. The foam floor should be a black mod podge on both sides and Velcro should be attached in places you want to sense the position of items and players. I sometimes use Velcro strips so that sensors can be relocated easily between games. The walls use large 18mm diameter magnets to hold them flat. Two glued to the back and then two more glued within the frame. This allows the walls to be taken down for packing. You can add foam board then even clay and some rollers for differing themes. In this puzzle titled Social Animals, the three players must find an additional set of eyes to stare at each other across a table. In another room in the dungeon, they found a knight in shining armour. And now for the electronics. There are a million ways to wire things like this up, from a simple CR2032 battery connected to an LED, all the way through to a Wi-Fi microcontroller that can talk to your home automation system. However, for the sake of simplicity, most of the puzzles I design use a Terraintronics.com Conway Castle board, and for getting more fancy, a Wemos D1 mini board along with a Canadavon Castle circuit board. Switches can be connected to create puzzle logic. If we use reed switches, they are typically open when no magnet is nearby, and closed when a magnet is near. An open switch does not pass electricity, a closed switch does. If we want to say both players must be in the right place, then we could connect the switches in series. Our design would look something like this. With that alone, we can create a puzzle that makes players find the right places for themselves along with additional items. The output of such a process could light LEDs or open a door and so on. What we create by connecting switches in a series fashion is the equivalent of an AND logic gate. Switch 1 AND switch 2 must both be closed for the LED to light up. Now what if we wanted some logic where one or the other could be closed? Easy. Rather than connecting switches in series, we can connect them in parallel. Either one of these switches will be closed and the electricity will find a path. So far, we've used a switch in a normal fashion, using it to pass signal and only switch when a magnet is over the reed switch. What if we wanted to create an effect that a magnet in the right place switches off the LED? By shorting or bypassing, the LED with a switch, we can switch an LED off when a player is on a specific tile and until an item such as a precious treasure is removed. In this case, the schematic would look something like this. Now you have to be careful doing this with typical coin cell batteries. If we don't have a Conway Castle board or a current limiting resistor, a short circuit to ground can cause massive amounts of current from something like a normal USB power bank. Physically, the kit comes with reed switches and small PCBs to mount them to. Carefully bend the legs on the glass reed switches as they can chip easily and once damaged they can stop working. Once you've assembled a sensor PCB, put some blobs of solder on the pads and connect a wire to each of them. Then some Velcro on the other side and voila, you have a complete sensor. If you attach strips of the opposite Velcro side underneath your foam, now you can attach and detach the sensors between games and vary up the puzzle. Please note, you'll need magnets for your players and the objects in the middle of their 1-inch bases. I like 10mm diameter by 2mm thickness neodymium magnets. They work well through dollar store foam core. 
Now it should be pretty clear that with this simple technology and some creativity, you can create some interesting puzzles that will deepen immersion, thrill your players and enhance your game master skill set. As part of the kit documentation I found, keeping a few things in mind help when designing puzzles. Read switches can't tell the difference between magnets. If your puzzle requires an object instead of a player, make it physically impossible to move a player into the space of the sensor. If you want to specify a foreign object, then make sure you have all the players have to stand in specific places. Make the players part of the puzzle or limit their movement. For more complex puzzles, I strongly suggest something like an Arduino or a BBC Microbit. I'm biased towards the Arduino compatible Wemos D1 Mini as I make some compatible daughter boards for them that can drive LEDs, motors, buttons and so on all over at terraintronics.com. Now let's create a puzzle. The simplest one from the documentation is called Battleships, just like the children's game. In my implementation, I have three players that need to stand in a specific place, a painting of a ship on a wall, and three LEDs built into that painting. When the puzzle is complete, all three LEDs should be on, and the games master at that point verbally waves the players through. Similar in principle to Tabletop Witchcraft's puzzle trap, the switches are placed in physically next to each other in a line and are connected one at a time to an LED and a channel of the Conway Castle board. The Conway board and the LEDs are on the back wall of the puzzle. The switches are under the table. Each LED's negative pin will be connected to one side of the switch and the other side to a channel on the Conway Castle board. A quick test should show one of the lights shine whenever a player's character stands on the switch. The joy in this puzzle is that it can be easily modified for your next game. Want any surrounding? A little paint of foam core. Want to make people stand around a plinth? Then move the switch pads beneath the foam core floor. And if you're feeling inspired, or if you've seen a movie or played a game where this has already been done, please comment below. If you want to see more videos on the creations of the escape rooms and puzzles and so on, then please like and comment and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. Your feedback drives the direction of not only the videos of this channel, but of the tools and products I make at terraintronics.com to up your game master skills. On the project's open source GitHub page, I've put together an assembly manual together with a few different puzzles. Go take a read, get excited at the possibilities and order your kit from terraintronics.com today. And that's all for now, folks. Please share any cool ideas you have in the comments and hopefully I'll get to discuss with you there. Take care.